with microscope drawings, um, you can do high power and low power drawings. Um, low power is essentially um, times four uh, magnification or objective or the times 10 objective. But low power is really defined by how you represent what you see rather than the magnification at which you are looking at it. So essentially low power is about showing how tissues are distributed. So in a low power drawing you do not need to draw and you should not draw individual cells. You are showing how cells with similar structure and function, how they are grouped, where they are located, uh, how they are distributed in that tissue or organ. Okay, so low power drawings do not have any information about individual cells, only about the location of groups of cells. Um, and all of these similar cells are bound by single continuous lines. So all of these cells right here these cells, the palisade cells, they would be grouped together in a biological drawing as we'll see. Okay, so we're not going to individually draw all these cells. Similarly with this upper layer of cells, the epidermis, we are not going to draw any of those cells individually but all of them collectively as a layer, um, which uh, we'll, we'll see that in the example. Okay, um, and yeah, and the only the last point is that you you don't keep drawing things. So be selective about what it is that you're choosing to draw from the image. Um, do not draw th uh, things repeating structures over and over again, where all you needed to get across was in would have been in one of those structures. So repeating would in effectual effectually be wasting space. So if you could draw one structure, draw it big. Um, why draw it five times? Taking up the space with five structures, um, thereby drawing each of these structures much smaller than you would have if you were just drawing one. And thereby you have, um, because you had to draw it smaller, you're possibly missing out important structural information in order to do that. Okay, so these are the things that, A, they are rules that you should follow and things you should consider when doing your drawings, but B, at some point, could be assessed. Okay, so please bear this in mind. Okay, um, so now let us do a low power uh, example drawing and see how it goes. Okay, guys, so now we are going to draw a low power plan of a uh, biological sample that we are viewing under the microscope. Right, so this is our sample which we could be looking at under the microscope and this is our biological knowledge that we have of the things that we should be seeing and this is really important. Again, I'm not going to go over the reasons why all over again, but suffice to say, try to know what it is you're looking at before you're looking at it. Uh, before you look at actual samples, because then it will be easier to recognize the important structures. Okay, so let's begin now. Again, I'm going to set up a page here, very roughly. Okay. Which is not part of my biological drawing, so don't start criticizing it yet. Um, and now let's proceed. Okay, so I'm looking at my sample. And f uh, the image below is just for reference, but, uh, okay, so I've got that top layer and I'm gonna leave some space on the side for labeling. But that top layer of cells, the upper epidermis is there. Now, my first line was okay, my second line is rubbish. Okay, because even though it's a single line and there's no overlapping, it is inconsistent in its um, darkness, shall we say. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. And that is much better. Okay, then 
we have then we have our collinchyma tissue right there so we're grouping those cells together and under that we have our vascular bundle trying to keep the proportions okay then we have nope not happy with that and then we have the tissue at the bottom trying to keep the proportions okay this is two groups of cells that i can see right there and i think that those roughly no we have the palisade and the spongy and we have the lower epidermis so they're clearly different I have my lower layer of cells down here. So you see all the cells that are the same, I'm grouping them together in a layer. Okay, we've got the spongy cells or the, the, the tissue with the air spaces. So that's clearly different from the palisade at the top. Okay, so I think that I am happy with that um, as my, the drawing part. Uh, we can see a few bit of overlapping lines. So we can see a bit of overlap here. We can see a bit of overlap there. So you want to try and avoid that. But we are going to proceed. Um, and then we go labeling. So yeah, that is the upper epidermis this is neater than I've written in a long time upper epidermal cells right there there is a cuticle theoretically so the diagram shows the cuticle there but look I I can't see that so I'm not going to draw it um, and then we have here we have the collinchyma Okay, and then right here we have our palisade. Palisade parenchyma. Okay, we have spongy. Parenchyma. Right, that up there, that should be the xylem. That should be the phloem. Okay. And that should be the lower epidermal cells at the bottom, so. lower epidermis. Now, that's that. Um, we should now have a title. So we should have... Uh, so for the scale, I can, I can write down the magnification that was used, for example. So I can write down the magnification or I can write down the objective okay so the magnification or the objective now the magnification would be the objective the magnification of the objective lens multiplies multiplied by the eyepiece lens okay so if you have access to that information like these are images that I'm taking from the internet so I don't have that information but um, when you're doing your microscope drawings, you will have access to this. 
and therefore you can give an, an estimation of the scale. Okay, all right, let's move on now to high power drawings.